Hey guys, how we doing? I gotta show you a shot of the sky before anything else. The sky is all ready to open up and dump on me, so let's hope we can get this done quickly. Look at that. Oh, I just felt a raindrop. And another. Oh boy. Oh boy. How quick can we do this? Okay, so I haven't talked sheep in a while, so we're gonna talk sheep today. Um, so today is August something, 16th, 17th, I don't know, somewhere in there. And here are our Katahdin ewes. Um, I got a couple Nigerian dwarf bucks sprinkled in there, but um, so here they are. And so as a farmer, um, I'm always looking forward to winter and fall because those are personally my favorite times of year, but we're already planning for, for fall to get here. And fall means breeding season for us um, on both the sheep and goat front. Okay, it's not it's not a couple of raindrops anymore. Woo! Okay, she's she's coming down. Let's see. Well, you can't see very well. It just looks gray. We need the rain desperately. It's been really, really dry, so this is a good thing. Anyway, um, so usually we breed um, sheep and goats with the intention of lambing and kidding season being in like March. I live in the upper peninsula of Michigan, so um, I used to always kid really, really early. Um, but now, like my life personally is just a little bit more hectic here. Um, so I kind of want to make things as easy as possible on myself, and that means kidding a little bit later into the season when it's warmer. Um, but even March sometimes <sighs> up here can be dicey. And we're going to try something new. We're going to try a little bit of an experiment this year. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, puppy is up upset. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my goats out and have them deliver in um, April. So that means starting breeding in November, which is probably the latest that I've ever done. We're going to try that on for size. And then I want to try something different with my sheep this year. So back in the day when my oldest two girls were little, they were in 4-H and they showed market lambs. And we raised Suffolk Hampshire crosses and um, we raised market lambs. And they'd show every year and it was a lot of fun. And then we stopped doing that and we got into goats and now we're into Katahdin's and um, we were at um, our local fair and like the bug hit me again to do market lambs again. So I'm going to do a little experiment this year. Um, so Katahdin's are hair sheep, but they also yield a fantastic meat carcass. But the thing with Katahdin's is that um, they're kind of a slower to grow out and Jordan's peeping in the background and um, they're slower to grow and like they do really well just being raised on pasture and they do great with that but I have seen where other people have used Katahdin's in the show ring um, not around our area we're a really small rural area but in the bigger areas they do not even common there but they do so I'm going to do a little experiment this year I am going to breed my Katahdin's and have them lamb just like I would um, when I was raising market lambs. So that means that I'm going to um, breed them in September for February kids. Now, that's a pain and it's evil and I'm going to kick myself in February to do this. I'm going to be regretting this in January. I'm going to have to come back to this video and be like, you were an idiot, but um, because you want them to get as much bang for their buck in that year. They have to be born January 1st or later of that year to be shown in market. Um, and obviously you want them born closer to that so they have a leg up being the oldest and the biggest and whatever. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see. And then I'm going to um, feed them out like I would uh, a market lamb, which means pounding them with the with grain and stuff. Um, it means walking them, exercising them, um, doing things to manipulate how they can get to their food to force them to 
um, engage certain muscles to build those muscles up bigger for showing, um, exercising, all these different things to really build size and muscle. And I'm going to try it and just see what happens. I'm probably not going to sell anything for market. And I don't think my kids are going to show. This is going to be just kind of an experiment this year to see how it goes. I'm just really curious to see if they can stand up to the traditional market lambs. Um, I think I may even take some and show them in open classes. So you don't have to do just market lambs that get butchered in the, in the fall, like you see 4-H kids do. You can show them in open too. You can show your rams and your ewes and lambs and stuff. So I think I'm going to do that and just kind of see how we would go against others. Um, judges around here probably aren't used to seeing the Katahdin. Um, your eye has to get used to seeing them because they look different. They don't look like what people see every year at fairs. Um, so what I'll probably do is just um, print off the breed standard, hand that out, you know, just hand it to the judges, not to make them feel stupid, but just to, so they have that information. Um, because like I said, this is really rural here and I don't know. So, hmm. I don't know, we're going to see. But anyway, we're, anyway, where I was going with this video is, so about a month before I breed, I um, flush out my ewes. Um, I do it to my does as well. Um, so like a month before, everybody gets dewormed. Everybody gets a shot of BOC, which is um, basically selenium, because we have horrible, um, we don't have much selenium around here. Um, I just put them on a really top quality mineral mix, a mineral blend. Um, that I kind of special order in bits and bobs of different things and then mix it together. They just started on that. Um, I just started graining them. If you have lush pasture, I throw them on that um, to just get like a big jump start to their bodies. And science has proven that if you flush them out, you're much more likely um, to have like more eggs released during ovulation. And then of course, increasing your chance of multiples, which is what you want. So I've always done that and it's seen me well every other time I've done this. So um, did that. So they'll have about three weeks before they get bred. I started flushing them out yesterday. Um, and then, yeah, a month before I put my goat does out with bucks, I'll do the same thing with them. And um, they'll also get a copper bolus. Sheep can't have copper. It's toxic to them. They can have it in small quantities, but not like we do with the goats, hard and heavy. So that's my plan. I don't know. I think I'm a little crazy. I mean, I know that I'm a lot crazy, but with this specifically. So we'll see. Like I said, come January and February when uh, we're probably going to be buried in two feet of snow and, and, you know, maybe frozen water pipes. And I may regret it at that point, but you can just say, I told you so then, I guess. Stay tuned, guys.